let's talk about the dopamine hypothesis of schizophrenia. The dopamine hypothesis says that schizophrenia and other psychoses are caused by excess dopamine, which is a neurotransmitter in the brain. To treat psychosis, people are often prescribed antipsychotic drugs, which decrease responsiveness to dopamine. What tends to surprise people is that the drugs came first and that the dopamine hypothesis came second. That is, the drugs were discovered by accident. Some of the earliest antipsychotics were actually being used as industrial dyes when the workers who were handling them began showing changes in mood. And so doctors took notice and began using these drugs to treat psychopathology. The first generation of antipsychotics were important in that they allowed psychotic patients to be treated outside a hospital setting. However, they had serious side effects, known as extrapyramidal side effects. Things like muscle tremors, involuntary muscle movements, fidgeting, shuffling gait, and even drooling. Long-term use of these drugs can cause irreversible side effects, a condition known as tardive dyskinesia, which involves repetitive and involuntary muscle movements, lip smacking, tongue wagging, and frequent eye blinking. Now, despite the side effects, these drugs did seem to reduce positive symptoms of psychosis. So things like delusions, hallucinations, and disordered speech were all helped. They were improved. Importantly, it was only once the drugs were in use that researchers started studying how they worked. And it was discovered that they reduced dopamine levels. And from there, the dopamine hypothesis was developed. Even though antipsychotics do reduce symptoms of psychosis, it's unclear whether the dopamine hypothesis explains why. It's really hard to measure dopamine levels, so we can only do so indirectly using neuroimaging, uh, measuring metabolites in cerebrospinal fluid, or post-mortem, that is, after patients die and we can examine their brains. Now, many researchers agree that dopamine is important in psychosis, but they reject the original dopamine hypothesis's claims that excess dopamine alone is its cause. Now, one example of a more recent theory that looks at dopamine and psychosis is the aberrant salience hypothesis. This hypothesis says that dopamine is important in making attributions of what is important or salient. According to this hypothesis, psychosis occurs when the mesolimbic pathway of the brain, which is important in the experience of rewards and pleasure, becomes overactive, generating excess dopamine. Excess dopamine then leads to the overattribution of significance, in other words, salience, to irrelevant events. And this possibly explains delusions, which are seen as dopamine-fueled efforts where patients overinterpret what is going on. It also potentially explains hallucinations, which this hypothesis views as internal perceptions that are attributed to external sources due to excess dopamine. The aberrant salient hypothesis is intriguing, but like the original dopamine hypothesis, it's hard to test because we can't directly or easily measure dopamine levels. In more recent years, second generation antipsychotics that purportedly have somewhat different and somewhat less severe side effects have replaced the original first-generation antipsychotics. These second-gen antipsychotics are also known as atypical antipsychotics. They are less likely to cause extrapyramidal side effects, but even so, it's notable that the U.S. Food and Drug Administration hasn't permitted drug companies from removing warnings about tardive dyskinesia from the labels of second-generation antipsychotics. When it comes to effectiveness, Antipsychotics do help many patients, but certainly not all of them. Less than 35% of patients show complete remission of symptoms, and another third don't improve at all. Still, these antipsychotic drugs, which only help some people and have serious side effects, are still currently the best drugs we have for severe psychosis. Mm -hmm.